So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another Tax Friday, it's a new tax function every Friday. In today's Tax Fridays, we are going to explore what curly brackets can do for you in DAX. You know that you can use them in Power Query, they're also available in DAX. And we're going to go a little bit deep into that rabbit hole and see what we can find. And I actually found what my favorite feature is for the Power BI desktop release February 2021. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just I'll, I'll post the video somewhere. Let's get started. Okay, guys. So, curly brackets. Here's the thing. I was creating a measure uh, that was using the function in and it uses the curly brackets. And again, I was like, oh, you know, I'm not very, very accustomed to the curly bracket thing. So I, was, I need to explore again. What was that all about? And I found quite interesting things. Let me show you. By the way, my favorite feature of the Power BI Desktop February update, it is for sure this little search bar. I'm using it all the time. It's just wonderful. I wish maybe there is. If you know, let me know. I wish there was a shortcut so you can access it so you don't have to go and click it. But otherwise, beautiful. So we're going to create a new table. I mean, I've gotten so much faster to do things. And, oh, it's just wonderful. Okay, okay, so curly brackets allow you to create the tables. The most simple form, it would be like this. And for each comma, you have a new column. So you put, you close that thing, you press enter, and it will create a column with, you know, type, um, column header call value, and then whatever you put it. So whatever you put after the comma, it will be rows, boom, 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 okay? So you can actually create uh, multiple columns. You have to put it between parentheses though. So if we would like to have, you can see that you can put number and text. You can go in there and then you can put another number, close the parentheses and then it will be value one, value two, you can see that. So there is actually, a, another way to create these if you want to actually have the values you can always change it here obviously but uh, if you want to create everything for from the beginning I showed you before that there is a um, function called data table and it, it works pretty much the same it's just that data table it allows you to specify the header names so you will see here, here you write the, what is the value? And then you have, I don't know, whatever number. And then you put this is an integer. And then you have the table in there with the brackets again. So you can have Spain. It has a, a little bit different construction that you would have with the only the curly brackets because you know you have parentheses when you have want to put multiple columns in the data table format you need to have the curly brackets everywhere so you will see here if we will want to construct the same thing instead of putting parentheses you put curly brackets everywhere so you will do Sweden and then you will put 200 for example and then boom 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 and then you have your table with the correct, right? It's a little bit harder to remember. So maybe the curly brackets is a more straightforward approach, I would say, but it works. It works. Both both create a table. Here you can just go back and the say put country. Nice, right? Okay. So you don't need to put values. You can actually leave empty. Obviously you have to have the same structure. So you can see here that this is um, completely finished. There is actually quite, you, you can actually put functions in there. So you can actually go like this. I thought it was quite cool. You can do Poland, for example. And then you can say, okay, I want for Poland the max of table two, you know, the other table that we created, number. So whatever is the max for that table, come here and put it, which makes it so cool, so cool. I have to close the curl bracket. Okay, and put another, another one of those. Come on. 
You see, so if we go to this table, the one that we created with the data table, you see that the max is 200, and then suddenly we have 200 here. Cool. Now, if we, let's put another column. I found this fascinating. I could just stop. <laughs> I was exploring this for the longest time. Put a number. Now, you can actually now, check this out, new column, and then you go in here and you do sum x, and then you do column value one, value two, sorry, and then column, column, so you say some x, you are going to feed these two columns as a table, and then as you remember when you done when you're using just a curly bracket, the table name is going to be called value. So if you want to sum of that new column, you have to put value. And you say, really, come on, I can do this plus this in a calculator column, and it works beautifully. Sure, but you can also do like max. And it will give you the max for everyone. You can do mean. And it's just cool. And you obviously can do this also in the measure. But then obviously the, the syntax will be different because you cannot have any columns in there. So you can do var. And then you put, again, the new table, the table that is generated with column one and column two is going to call value, so you call it in. Did it work? Test always your measures, you never know. So there, measure what you see there. It is doing it. The ground totals will always be wrong because you're doing like obviously in that case you are better off with these because it's going to give you the right result. Okay, so how cool is this? I mean, I mean, don't go using these and as an excuse for unpivoting your tables, please don't. But I found it quite fascinating actually. Obviously, you can instead of some mix, you can feed this table with the filter, with a summarize, with the columns, whatever. There are a thousand ways to do the same thing in that. But I found it quite interesting, anyhow. So it gives you when when I do this type of exercises, what it does is it makes me it familiarize myself, or I familiarize myself with the DAX language, and I remove some of the mystery around it, and you. you you test it, you play with it, you have a little bit of fun and you're curious about what works and what doesn't work and hopefully that way next time that yeah, you have to use the curly brackets I will be more confident because I've played a little bit and, and you know I massage it a little bit, I understand it a little bit more. So anyhow, I, I, I do this actually quite not often but I do it when I find things like hmm, what was that? <laughs> And I think that you should do it too. You use stacks not only for creating your super calculated or measures that will help your organization, but also to play with it. Have fun with it. It's a lot easier to learn when you enjoy what you're doing and you're able to explore and experiment, in my opinion, anyhow. So I'm not going to make this video longer, I promise. I will see you again on Monday with a, I think it's going to be a cool Power Query video. But uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see you on Monday again. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.